much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I am very pleased to speak in favour of this motion, which would enable us to pass a bill tomorrow to prevent our crashing out of the EU with no deal at the end of October. And let us just remember why we are at this point. This discussion is happening now because the Prime Minister is running scared of democracy. A Prime Minister who knows his reckless no deal Brexit will never get the support of this House. But instead of having the courage to make his case here, to putting himself to scrutiny, instead of that, Parliament is going to be suspended, brushed aside as an inconvenience to an executive that is frankly lurching out of control. Well, I am proud that so many brave colleagues inside this House and so many of the public outside it are saying so loudly and clearly that they will not stand for this Prime Minister's blatant power grab, that they will not stand for a no-deal Brexit being rammed through this House, and that they will stand up to make sure that this legislature does what it is meant to do, which is to hold this executive, this feral, out-of-control executive, to account. Now, there's been a lot of talk about democracy tonight, and the Leader of the House, who I have to say, with his body language throughout this evening, has been so contemptuous of this House sit and of the people. Up, and for the benefit of Hansard, the Leader of the House has been spread across around three seats, lying out uh, as if that was something very boring for him to listen to tonight. Well, can I just say to him, when he has been lecturing us about democracy, we will have none of it, because... Yeah, this yeah. government has no mandate for the vicious form of Brexit it is pursuing. It was never on the ballot paper. More than that, the right honourable member for Surrey Heath said as recently as March, and I quote, we did not vote to leave without a deal. That wasn't the message of the campaign I helped to lead. So let's hear no more of this posturing that somehow people on that side of the House from the government are standing up for the people and we are not. Those of us on this side, and particularly those of us who have been arguing for a people's vote from the very start, are precisely the ones who are standing up for the people and want their voices to be heard in this debate. Now, time is short and I want to make two more very quick points. The first is that in all of this debate about process and procedure, we are in danger of forgetting what a no deal actually means for the people of this country. What it means, as we know from Operation Yellowhammer, is shortages of food and fuel. It means people unable to get their life-saving medicines. It also means a nightmare for people in Northern Ireland, and I pay tribute to the uh, Honourable Member for North Down, who has made yeah, that yeah. case so many times. How dare we, in this chamber, think that we're going to rip up the Good Friday Agreement and think that it's nothing to be concerned about? There is everything to be concerned about that. But I also want to say a word as well about the three million, those people who have made their lives here in this country, expecting that their contribution would be valued, instead of which now they are in an intolerable limbo, yeah, yeah. not knowing whether their rights are going to be upheld or not. Yeah, yeah. But finally, Mr Speaker, I want to make a point that I think is important, although some may feel it is, it is boring. But actually, do you know what? The reason that we are in this crisis now, one of the many reasons, is because we don't have a codified written constitution. It is only the unwritten, uncodified understandings that protect the body politic from regressing to government with minimal checks balances and accountability. Up until now, we've had to depend on people playing by the rules. Well, now we have a government that is not playing by the rules. So we need more than ever a written constitution drawn up by a democratic citizens' con convention that will put people at the heart of our politics for the first time in UK history. Bob Seeley.